The number one reason that your residents are going to not sign a lease renewal or complain and write a bad review on Google is maintenance. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me as always on these Wednesdays, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Todd? Man, I'm doing fantastic. Um, It's crazy, Matt. But, uh, you know, life is good. I wouldn't have it any other way. Just loving loving the deals we're doing right now. We got a lot going on on our plate, but it's good. It's, uh, It's still a weird time. Obviously, we don't, you know, interest rates are way up and probably continue to rise. Inflation is who knows where. It seems like it's just going to continue to go for a long time. I feel it will um, go for quite some time. You know, this transitory inflation uh, that we've got is is transitory for maybe the next couple of years. Uh, so, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's long-term transitory. Um, but we're still we're still buying and uh we're cautiously buying but we've talked about it on the show and and we just we want to look for strong locations and uh we're not going to sit on the sidelines at least right now we're not sitting on the sidelines completely uh we're we're being you know for just really thoughtful uh but it, it's kind of as always you know we're always trying to be very thoughtful and we're trying to be very careful with how we buy. And so we're doing the same thing right now. But it's, uh, man, it's been a crazy last just couple months with several deals uh, closed on an assisted living deal last week and uh, closing on an apartment building this week and closing on a retail strip center in a couple more weeks after that. And so it's just been a pretty wild uh I don't know, last couple months, I would say, and, and we'll continue for a little while. And we've got a lot of big projects going on that are just, you know, in the company that we've been going for a little while too. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a lot of work to be able to get these under your belt uh, to acquire these properties. But I think the hardest work is after the closing date. And now you've got your day-to-day operations to oversee. So that's the boring part that nobody wants to talk about. And actually I enjoy it a lot, but most people don't want to talk about it. They think it's so much, it's so much sexier, right. To talk about the cool, like we're, we got this deal under contract and you know, now we're raising the money for it and how we just raised $5 million and blah, 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 or 10 million or whatever it is. And ah, we're super excited. And, And then once we close, we show the beautiful pictures of it closed. And then, um, you know, maybe we sell it and we show the profits and we're so excited and we want to show all that stuff, but we don't talk about what happens in the middle. And the middle is what's going to make or break your investment, right? We can buy the property for a great price. And I know plenty of people that bought properties for what appear to be fantastic prices, but end up struggling. And, um, you know, that can be, that can be the biggest challenge. Yeah, it all comes down to asset management. Uh, How are you executing the business plan? How are you running the day-to-day operations to keep it profitable and improve the the quality of the property so that it's worth more when you eventually do sell? Yeah, you know, it's funny, Matt. So many people, I think think one of the blessings of podcasts and and audible books, uh, but I would say especially podcasts because they're short form. One of the blessings is that we get to hear success stories. We get to hear what people are doing, some some strategies. Uh, We get to see that it's possible, right? But one of the, probably the the downfalls, the curses is that oftentimes people think it's way easier than what it is, that all we need to do is focus on finding that property, raising the money. And then boom, we all of a sudden are multi, multi millionaires many times over. And, you know, that's, that's it. That's going to happen. And they forget to focus again on the boring part that nobody talks about, which is actually truly making sure you're managing the properties, making sure, you know, the asset management is, is going well. I talked to so many people that have no clue about that middle part, right? About the actual execution. And they think that's such an easy part. 
And I've heard it before of like, well, why, why you as a GP are you getting, you know, getting your, getting this cut. And it's like, well, cause we're the CEO of this company and this company happens to own real estate, but we're the CEO and we're making sure that this project goes the direction it's supposed to go. And quite frankly, it never goes exactly as planned, but that's what we're there to do is try to execute our business plan to the, to the highest degree possible and make sure that, that our investors are getting paid and make sure that everybody's getting taken care of in the end. That's a lot of work. And I think so many people discount how much work that truly is. And here I thought it was just sitting on the beach drinking my Most people do. Yeah. Yeah. Most people do. Yeah. I'm sure that's exactly what you thought, Matt. <laughs> um, perfect example. And I, I try not to, to uh, dig too deep into this one just because I don't want to really give it away. But uh, the, the, there's a younger group, <clears throat> super excited, uh, got into a, a property, right? And they're dealing with this asset right now. They bought for quote unquote, the right price, a great price. They did their underwriting. Um, but they were short on reserves and things aren't going as planned. And they're sitting here not very long after closing. And they're wondering if they need to sell this asset for a loss and which will create a loss for their investors, uh, which will be about a hundred percent of their profit or of their original uh, investment. You know, so they're sitting here wondering, do we sell this building? Do we just have to get out of it and lose all of our investor money? Mm. Okay. That is due to poor business planning. That's due to poor underwriting, but that's due to poor asset management as well. And so that's the importance of it. This stuff happens. People completely mess up and we can still mess up, but we try to have processes and systems into the right asset management in place. So let's dive in, Matt, to asset management and kind of what are the things that you need to be really looking for and really doing to be a successful asset manager to have a successful project. Sure. What's all involved with asset management? Yeah. So in the simplest form, asset management is just managing the property manager. And you might own the property management company, and you might not own the property management company. In our case, we hire third-party property management companies. Now, in the case where you ha had your own property management company, you're certainly not going to be doing the asset management for your company that you're also managing, right? For your third, for, for your own property management company that you're also managing, you're going to have somebody else within the company, or you're going to have somebody. Um, outside that you're going to hire specifically to be the asset manager. But you're going to have, essentially, it's as simple as that. You're hiring somebody or you're doing it yourself to look at what the day-to-day -day operations of the property are and to make sure the property management company and everybody else involved is executing the business plan as, as proposed. And what kind of systems do you have in place to you know keep all that organized? Yeah, so good question. So here, if for, I'll give you a little breakdown. First of all, we, we uh, meet minimum of once a week uh, with the pro property management company on a call. And we go through the important aspects of the call. So it's going to evolve as we go. But the, the first, you know, first kind of, well, pr actually prior to closing, we start these calls as well. So the first kind of tranche um, is pre-planning. We're talking about the closing. We're talking about what we need to get to closing. We're talking about uh, staffing, making sure they've got the staffing uh, in place. Um, we're talking then about uh, the construction plan, what we're doing and, and making sure they understand our business plan, how we're going to go about it. How many units do we want to vacate at one point in time? Um, what you, What type of units are we looking to to vacate? What, how quickly do we want to move along this timeline? You know, where do we bring rents up that let's say it's, uh, one of our residents is uh, lease expires, but we don't want to renovate that unit because we've, we've got too many units. Well, what are we going to bring their rent up to? 
If we want them to continue to live in the property, what's their rent going to come up to? So we, we're talking through all of those various different aspects. And then as the property closed, we're still covering a lot of those different aspects, making sure we're kind of tracking uh, the, the data. And um, we use a, a, a Monday morning report, an MMR. And it's just a simple uh, spreadsheet that shows um, it shows the occupancy. It shows the the trends. Um, also shows the delinquencies. It shows the uh, amount of showings and traffic that have happened to the property over the last week. Um, it's going to show uh, how many units are currently currently leased. How many units are currently on notice. How many units are currently pre-leased, right? So we're going to get to see the full picture. And that's updated again every single week. And so a lot of our call is based on that tracker itself. So and that's, what, yep. Oh, what do you do with that data? Um, I mean, the, the main part of that, I guess it, it really just depends on what that data says. But, you know, we're just trying to track of, how do we increase traffic if we need to increase traffic? Um, do we need to raise rents, right? So if we're approaching 100% occupancy and we have so many leads coming in and pre-leasing and well, our rents are probably low. So can we push those rents? And so that'll be a conversation of, hey, let's do a, a rent comp uh, in the market. Let's go secret shop some properties and see what else is happening. So we had a property in Memphis and where occupancy was really high and uh, it just felt like maybe we could push on the rents. And so that was the conversation I had is, is look, um, let's, let's go and secret shop all the properties nearby. Again, we haven't done it now in a couple months. And let's, so let's see what, what we can charge. Um, and let's see if we can push the market quite frankly. And so there's sometimes where you go, look, the rent comps show uh, that we should be charging a thousand bucks a month, but man, we're just, we're on fire on this property and maybe we, maybe see if we can be the leader in the market. Maybe let's try to charge, you know, $1,100 a month. And so we might do some testing of the market uh, because of that. Um, and there could be the opposite too, Matt. It could be that, man, our, our occupancy, it continues to decline. Uh, we went from you know, 98 to 96. Now we're at 95. And it looks like if I look at the notices and the pre-leases, we're going to be at 94 soon. And so we have to go, okay, what do we, what do we need to do here? Well, if we're getting a ton of traffic, it's not the traffic, right? If we're not getting traffic, it's how do we drive more traffic? But if we're getting a ton of traffic and no leases, there's, there's probably two things. One is I got a bad leasing agent. So we can track what's your follow up, right? With them, how many, uh, well, how many people that came and actually looked at the property had had gotten communication back. Um, we also will, at times, if we are worried a little bit about that, is do a secret call, right? It's typically not going to be us because they hear our voices all the time, but we're going to have somebody that'll call and say, hey, I'm looking to move into the area, blah, blah, blah. How do they talk to that person, right? How, how do they engage with that person? Are they asking for follow-up? Are they asking to set the appointment up? And we can go as far as having people that, when we do this, go to the property themselves. And they will go to the property. I'm interested in renting. And they will feel how, they will tell us how that went. And we'll get a report from them. There's companies that'll do this for you, Matt. They will go and they will secret shop and they'll give you a full report. They'll tell you how, the, how that engagement went. You know, what kind of follow-up questions were asked? Um, you know, did they, when I went to do a showing, was somebody there on time? Do you know that the person who was supposed to be showing, did they meet me there on site, on time? Um, you know, did they collect my information. Did they do a, a live showing of a unit? What was the overall condition of the unit? What was their overall, you know, mood? Did they ask qualifying questions? Did they present me with an opportunity to lease the property or lease the unit? You know, 
So those are, there's professional companies that that's what they do. They send out people to do seeker shopping and we can gauge how good our leasing staff is. And if we have an issue with the leasing staff, well, then it might be time to find some new leasing staff, right? Yeah. So it seems like while you're doing the asset management, you're keeping close tabs of all these key data points and adjusting uh, you know, things along the way to make sure you're you're up to date with the uh, following the business plan and you're up to date with the market conditions so that you can maximize profits and 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 uh, you know get the property really well under control like you want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing too is is again uh, hiring, uh, or if it's uh, you have people in the area, do a property drive through right? I want to know the condition of my property. I showed up in, in Memphis uh, three, four weeks ago, and I was very disappointed at the cleanliness of the property. There's trash outside, there's trash inside, there's just, it just wasn't in pleasant condition. And we're trying to lease this out to high-end tenants. How am I going to lease this out to high-end tenants when I have trash lying around? It's just not going to work. Now it's a construction zone. So that's their excuse, but that's not acceptable. And so <clears throat> if you can't get to the property consistently, hire somebody. It can be as simple as put have that person put a GoPro on top of their vehicle and drive around or take a, do a little property walkthrough and take, you know, 25 pictures. And then they just shoot you over those pictures or that video and you can see what's going on. And if your property management company knows and sees that you're doing that, they're going to understand that and do it randomly, right? Um, and show them the results. Like, look, we had we had a, a you know walkthrough of the property, and here's what we found. Like, there's trash everywhere. There's this is going on, or the dumpsters are full, or you know whatever it might be. Is this really how we want our property to be operating? Right. They drove by and they tried to get in the office. The office was locked at 1030 in the morning. Mm. You know, office hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. What's going on? They came back at two and there was still nobody there. What's happening here? They came back that two days later, you know, one o'clock and there was nobody there. So <clears throat> we can have those conversations. So, I, by the way, that's a, that's a good point. Back to, back to that one. Leasing staff is important. And if I've got a big property, I want to make sure people are in the office. And if nobody's in the office, then it's hard to engage with the residents. And sometimes there's not people in the office because they're out engaging with the residents. Okay. So we have to make sure that if we come to the office and nobody's in the office, that we do a, a check again, and maybe even another check again to see, is that just a one-time coincidence or is that a continual thing? Right. And so uh, I mean, there's, there's been times where that every time I show up to the property unannounced that nobody's at the property. Um, that's a bad thing. Yeah. When I've done secret shopping before, <laughs> I, I've liked uh, to see where the leasing agent, like they leave a little note or, or one of those little clock signs that says, we'll be back by X number of time when they're showing off, showing me a, a unit. <laughs> Um, and, and so then I know like, okay, if I was, uh, you know, somebody just showing up at a random time and they weren't there, I could see the note and be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll wait around until, you know, five minutes or whatever until they're back. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And if they don't have that as the asset manager, you should be telling them, look, you need to make sure you're telling your residents when you're in and out of the office. So let's get a clock. Let's get a, uh, a, a dry erase board that you can write down, whatever it is, but we need to engage with the residents. And if a resident comes to the office and nobody's there, they're irritated, mm -hmm. right? Just like you are when you seek your shop and nobody's there. And if nobody's telling you when they'll be back, you're like, what the heck's going on here? So, so yeah, they need to communicate with the residents. Um, that's another thing too, is, is how, how are we engaging with our residents? Um, we want to make sure that we're we're doing things. So like we just threw a pool party um, at, at one of our properties and, you know, we, we have food truck nights and um, you know, just different things like that. So are we making sure that that type of engagement is happening? Uh, that's another, you know, obviously the asset manager should be tracking that and making sure that type of engagement is happening and 
um, that we're truly making this a community. Excellent. So I'm curious, as if you're working as an asset management or as an asset manager for a particular project, how much are you getting paid? Well, <clears throat> so we will charge anywhere between one and a half and 2% of the gross income coming in. Now, if you're a asset manager, right, and that's your job, you're going to be getting paid anywhere between 80 to, I don't know, what, 200 plus a year, depending on how many properties you're managing and what your experience is and all that kind of stuff. And if you've got some construction management that you can do as well. So you could expect you know, it, like I said, 80 to 200 grand a year. Um, and so if you're looking to hire somebody to do that role, then that's what you should expect to pay. That's the other aspect, Matt, is we've got the asset manager, but they should also be tracking the construction that's happening at the property. Oh, the other thing too, that we haven't mentioned, we've, we've talked about a lot of stuff, but maintenance. I want to make sure that at the end of the day, all my maintenance requests have been taken care of. I don't want a bunch of outstanding maintenance requests. So we should be tracking our maintenance and how many maintenance calls that we have every single day, what type of maintenance we have, and uh, and are we actually able to take care of those calls? And if not, then why? And so that's another really important part. The number one reason that your residents are going to not sign a lease renewal or complain and write a bad review on Google is maintenance. That's the number one issue. It's not how much rent you're charging. It's 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 not, you know, any number other tenants in the in the building. You know, if I guess if you're in a high crime area, that might be the case, but probably not because those people are probably just used to it because they accepted a high crime area in the first place. So it's it's just it's maintenance. And so are we actually taking care of our maintenance? What type of maintenance issues do we have? Um, as an asset manager, you should be kind of tracking and understanding that so you can report back to the owners or if you're you are the owner that says, hey, look, this is maybe a capital expenditure item. If we're continuing to have roof leaks every month, should we just replace the roof? Right? If we're continuing to have plumbing issues in building 205, should we really be looking at redoing some of the plumbing or all of the plumbing in that building? Or do we have a bigger issue, right? So those are big things to track with the maintenance and, and making sure the scheduling is staying, staying tight on that too. Okay. And does the asset manager also do uh, reporting to the investors? Kind of depends on, um, on how your company's set up. So certainly could, uh, but doesn't have to, right? Um, you know, how, how, how we are set up is that's kind of how it rolls through, but you don't, that could be a totally different, you know, investor relations versus asset manager, you know, as we, you know, right, right now, our company in Duras, we're looking at hiring an asset management or asset manager. So that'll be a full-time position. We'll pay somebody to do. We'll of course continue to track it along with them, but that's their main job. And they're looking at all the metrics. They're looking at all the data. They're looking and making sure all the books are being reported properly. They're working with our bookkeeper. They're, you know, they're, they're doing all of that to make sure we're hitting the metrics we need to, to hit. Um, and, and so that would be a full-time position. That's kind of how, you know, we're, we're looking at evolving. I would say we're probably one purchase away from hiring that full-time position. Um, construction, you know, the asset manager could also play a role in the construction management or could be the construction manager. Um, it kind of really depends on the size and scope of your projects and how many properties they're asset managing and you know, again, you might have several asset managers, project managers, and they all kind of report to one person. Uh, so it all, all depends. But that's another really important aspect of, of asset management is making sure the construction is being tracked properly so that we know how to lease out our buildings. We understand what kind of rents we're hitting with our, with our new renovations. Um, 
We understand the level of finishes that we're getting compared to other properties. You know, we want to be able to track that and understand it because sometimes we might be able to dial back on our construction, Matt, or other times we might have to go a little bit deeper on our construction. So you want to be able to track the data that's happening to understand, do we go deeper on our construction? Do we kind of pull back on the construction? You know, if, look, if Matt, if I'm getting lease renewals uh, for my classic units at, you know, a thousand bucks a month and I'm doing a full blown renovation, yet I'm only getting a uh, thousand seventy five a month. I might go, well, look, we, we don't have to do renovations or maybe there's a little bit bigger gap. And I go, well, look, I mean, we're, we're doing this renovation. It's costing us $15,000 a unit for, but we're only getting $175 a month extra. Could we taper it down and cut that in half and maybe get 150 a month? And so we can test that type of stuff. But if you don't have anybody watching, engaging that, those types of decisions are just not taking place. And you're going about and doing this $15,000 renovation per unit. What you could be spending 7,000 a unit and only be dropping your rents by 25, maybe 30 bucks a month. Boy, you spent a ton of money because you didn't have somebody paying attention to that. And how much uh, decision-making power does the asset manager have in determining like when to sell the property versus refinance versus just keep on keeping on? Yeah, again, um, I would say it really depends on, on the, the role of, of the asset manager and who that person is. And again, if, if it's ownership, then they're kind of going hand in hand, right? Uh, if it's a person that you're, you hired third party, they probably have very little decision in, in the sale of the asset. And their main job is to continue to run that asset at high, the highest level of performance pro, uh, possible, right? And execute the business plan. And maybe that's something that you put in their role is to get the, a broker price opinion here and there. And that's something that you put in the role to do. And so then they can go, hey, here's how, here's the metric of how we're operating the property. Here's our NOI. Here's our cash on cash, cash flow. And here's the value, future value of the property. And, uh, and then you can gauge as an owner, do you want to sell or do you want to hold on to it for, for longer? Uh, they might also engage with with lenders as well and say, what, what does a refinance look like? So it really depends on what that role of that person is, but really the most important part of their role is to make sure that the business plan is being executed and that rents are being raised. That the other thing too is we had an asset manager uh, that was you know kind of part time on one property of ours, um, and and that person was executing the business plan as we set up, Matt, but we only had projected rents raising by about $90 per month. Okay. Well, we had already raised rents by about $110 per month at that point in time. So they were doing their job. They were executing the business plan, but dear, were they doing their job? Because guess what? Market rents were actually, an additional $50 a month higher hmm. than where we were at. So I would say they weren't doing their job because they did execute the business plan, but they also weren't looking forward in the future and how we can continue to execute our business plan, but exceed our business plan. And that's what you want them to do is try to do better than the plan, do better than what, your projections were. And so that was the conversation. And my disappointment with that asset manager is, look, you're just go going with the status quo. Like we need to look and, and keep up with the market and see what else we can do to further increase our NOI. Cause that's, that's, uh, that's what we need to do with this investment. And, and that's what our investors expect of us. Yeah, it's always nice when you can surprise your investors with better than expected returns. Absolutely. Like that's that's what we all want. And that, that's what a good asset manager can do. Uh, the good asset manager too is going to 
tell you when to fire a property management company. When to you, you know, start engaging with the new property management companies. And so they're really making sure the property management company is, is on top of it and, and things are going as planned with that property management company. If that property management company isn't doing their job, then the asset management company needs to step in and say, hey, look, our asset management asset manager needs to step in and say, look, this is not the right fit. We need to, we need to uh, pivot right now and this is why. And um, and make that decision, or help make that decision at least. So, is there any aspect you would classify as the hardest part about asset management? Um, I think the hardest part with probably anything is is um, being straight with people. Uh, I think there's it's so easy for people, myself included, to tiptoe around issues uh, and to not engage in a, an aggressive behavior. And I, I'm not saying you have to throw chairs at people, but um, sometimes you have to be blunt and tell it like it is. And it's not going to make people happy. But overall, that's the only way you're going to get results is if you're blunt and honest and, uh, you know, and you have high expectations. So I think the, the hardest part is to not, you can't be a people pleaser. You just, you, it's your job to make sure the property is going the way it's planned. And it's your job to make sure you correct mistakes that are happening along the way. Um, and, and you're not going to make friends with everybody. And now I'm not saying you need an asset manager that's a jerk and runs all over people. That's not at all what I'm saying. They have to be fair and honest and, and be respectful to everybody that they're dealing with. But they also have to sometimes be tough, and uh, and sometimes they have to ruffle some feathers, and that that's just how it is. Yeah, and at the same time, I think people do appreciate when they receive uh, clear and consistent communication. That's the key, right there, right? Clear and consistent communication, and directed, and also maybe not the corrections but the understanding of what the corrections look like, right? Not just, hey, why is the occupancy not 95%? You guys said it was going to be 95% and we're disappointed. No, is what are we going to do about this? Look, we had only seven people show up over the last month to tour this apartment building. How are we getting people indoor and what can we do to get more people through our apartment building? Let's brainstorm, right? Those are the things we need to focus on. Not you guys are doing a bad job. Fix it now. Yeah. I mean, you want to certainly support your staff to uh, get them to take ownership of their roles and empower them to do so. And they're going to do a lot better job versus you just being a dictator and micromanaging everything they right. do. <clears throat> right. Yeah, man. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's probably, yeah, and there's a, there's a lot to asset management. It's a big, it's a big role. And, and it's, again, it's, it, it's so overlooked. It's just, everybody thinks real estate so easy. And quite frankly, it's not that hard. But it also, it's running a business. It takes work and it takes effort and you have to put it into it. Otherwise, you're going to get poor results and you might get lucky, right? The market's been great. And so it's got a lot of people lucky, but you're going to find out who's bad in business when, when the market shifts and it will eventually here. And, and so you're going to find out who's, who's, you know, just not doing it the right way and, and not being an asset manager and kind of letting things fly. Um, you really find out if you're a good asset manager or not when you've got a, a, a bad property management company, right? And, and that's when you find out how, how good you are. It was when things start to go wrong. Yeah, that makes sense. So, well, cool, man. Anything else that you want to add uh, to asset management? No, that's it for today. All right, man. You have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day a Saturday. Thanks. You too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. 
It's a rating and review, just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.